walking to the path and to join Prosperity Show, and I'm so happy to be here in my new studio. And I'm here with uh, I'm here with Sandy Freshy and Diane Jones. They're very good friends of mine. Uh, we have a mastermind group together, and we're going to continue the conversation that it seems to have permeated the last couple of shows, which is um, authenticity and and living what you love. So uh, these ladies are brilliant, and so I'm just going to jump right into uh, what they have to share. Uh, I started off the radio shows with the question of what's your greatest tip for uh, living a life of authenticity, and which of course leads to joy and prosperity. So Diane, do you want to go ahead? Yeah, I, I I don't know if it's going to be the same tip. Hopefully not. Um, I would say start with just as in everything, start with who you are, who you want to be, and you know you've heard the word vision, values, and things like that. So when you have that overarching theme for your life and commitment, this is this is what I'm committed to, and this is who I am, and continually, and this, this fits in with coaching, asking the questions: Who am I? Who am I? who am I and don't worry about the answer just allowing it to come so when you start with that broad perspective everything else just falls underneath it so I'll start mm -hmm. with that yeah that's a great place to start Diane like questions are you know we found powerful. out through our coaching are just so powerful and if we ask them of ourselves and again goosebumps but here I go again uh, <laughs> if we ask them of ourselves then there's some of the most important questions you can ask because then that'll lead to uh, authenticity with other people and and mm. improved relationships and all the rest yeah what about you Sandy well I don't remember what my tip was from before but I, I love the framework Diane that you just gave because the first thing that came to my mind was feel yourself first and I'll, oh, I'll, I'll put a, yeah. I'll, I'll explain that here um, this morning I've been in a week and well I had a girlfriend come visit over the weekend but we gave each other a lot of space and I live with my um, husband um, who is away for three weeks and comes home and for three weeks and is away for three weeks with his work and my stepson is very strong very powerful energy and he's 17 and both of them have been gone for the last week and a half and I woke up this morning and every morning I have a meditation you know I just check in with myself and I could I noted how I could feel myself hmm. without uh, independent of the presence of other people and it's like okay hold on to this this is how I really feel okay <laughs> so now I'm gonna take that forth and you know be with other people and hold on to who I am by this feeling of this this calm the this centered this uh, very clear almost for me, almost a it is a physical feeling of clarity. Mm. So, and yeah. I mean, almost, almost un undescri indescribable. You can't put words to it. It's just ah, oh, remember this, and I'll recognize it. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, and the more you do it, the more yeah. you can recognize it. Mm -hmm. Right. So, know yourself. You know yourself. thyself. Yeah. So don't stop asking yourself yourself the questions. Ask mm -hmm. yourself the questions over and over again write them down go back to them make sure that you're not you know shifting into another place in your life where you know maybe you need to tweak your values maybe one mm -hmm. of your needs has become a value um, oh, yeah. and just keep yeah. on that self-discovery and and the second thing from that is is Sandy um, like just how important that time is to yourself mm -hmm. and that you know quietude without your identification with any of these quote roles that you're playing in your life and yeah. feeling it and and remember to feel it and yeah. that's not something we're taught and are used to doing yeah mm -hmm. and I like that what you said Ange about um, at, keep asking yourself those questions and and as you were saying that I was thinking yes it's so essential to ask yourself is this me in every moment in every situation is this really me is this am I really expressing where I am, who I am right now and sometimes who you are or how you're feeling or whatever may not be that 
nice and fairy and airy and fairy and pleasant and all that. <laughs> you may just need to, you know, right now I am authentically angry and frustrated, you know, sometimes <laughs> that's what it is, you know, but, it, but it's yeah. true. It's, it's authentic in that moment and if you keep asking yourself in each moment, is this truly me and bringing that out, yeah. it just leads you down that path. Yeah, and I love how you said bringing that out because it's about allowing, not controlling. Mm -hmm. I mean, it might feel like it's a little controlling, like, oh, I'm noticing this, I'm listening, and I'm going to change this, but that's, that's about allowing and going back to. Often what we do is in response to the situation outside ourselves, what other people think, their reaction to us, we try to control other people's reactions. And instead, if we, and I love how you said that, and if we allow ourselves to be ourselves, then everything just flows right to the right place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah th that's exactly what I was remembering, Diane, when Sandy was talking, you saying that it's about allowing. Yeah. Like yeah. That's something you really need to just let sink in. Like it's that's yeah. one of those okay, let's breathe mm. that in moments, right? Mm -hmm. Because because it's almost akin to the whole acceptance piece, mm -hmm. right? Like just accepting that, you know, the anger that we might feel in that moment is a perfectly normal human emotion and mm -hmm. and it's not necessarily, you know, we might be able to get to a place where we're healthy enough to not feel that as much but it's mm -hmm. still going to be there just like everything else so if you just allow it and don't fight against it and don't make yourself feel guilty about it and right. and uh, and allow the expression of yeah. what's truly authentically you. Yeah. yeah what you resist yeah. persists yeah mm -hmm. and, and when you say you know just allow and, and just let it to let it kind of flow out and come out, you know, especially in terms of emotion because emotion is just energy and, and mm -hmm. energy has to move, you know, energy in motion, emotion. And when mm -hmm. you just allow it to come out, it's really not, you know, anger, frustration, all those things that kind of stress us out and make us feel bad or whatever, they're not really real. Like fear isn't really real. But if we just kind of allow it to flow, then we can get back to what's what's really the truth here. Mm -hmm. What's really the truth in this situation? What's the truth about me in this situation? Yeah. So. And if we, if we don't, if we're not allowing and we're judging and saying this isn't good, I got to hold it in, that's mm -hmm. when it is expressed inappropriately and more from a fear standpoint because it's yes. like this. You're mm -hmm. pushing against it and poof, it's physics, really. And yeah. energy, energy yeah. is no different. Yeah. Yeah, that's a beautiful way to put it, Diane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, I never really thought of it in that way before. Mm. If yeah, you've ever seen um, yeah. What the Bleep Down the Rabbit Hole, uh, I'm going to mention this Once movie. Once I saw it, yeah. yeah. Um, and that part where they're showing the the little blobs, which are the emotions, like anger is red and, <laughs> and uh, you know, sadness is, or maybe jealousy is green or, you know, whatever. There's these, there are these little blobs in your brain. <laughs> and mm -hmm. when it, something triggers the emotion, they start to do the dance. Uh-huh. You know they're active. They're and, moving. You know, yeah, and it's they're strengthening in motion. like those neural pathways in your mm -hmm. in your brain, right? Mm -hmm. So when we start to shift, they don't necessarily go away. Like those pathways are still there. Those little guys are still there, but they're sleeping, <laughs> and they're, they're not sleeping. you know doing a party in your brain and overstimulating you and. Or you know, they can but, move in a way that's an allowance, that's, that allows it to kind of dissipate and, and leave instead of being this concentrated um, force that, that we refuse to look at and um, we, we allow it to have the power that it does. Mm -hmm. when, and, I, and it's just, you know, what I ask people is, who's in charge? <laughs> who's, who's the boss? Who's the boss of you? Is it you or is it these little blobs? <laughs> I'll say blobs <laughs> next time. That's, that's, a great, that's a really great question to ask clients, Diane. Who's really in charge here? Who's and, in charge? And, and sometimes, you know, I, I see those little blobs. I love that imagery, Ange, because, you know, <laughs> I see those little blobs dancing. And you have the choice to... Um, to let them dance over here and, and do your thing here because you're focused on who am I really 
and expressing that, or you have the mm -hmm. choice to go and dance with them. You know, yeah, but when you're yeah. dancing over there, you know, um, you you may not who who know who's in charge, and and obviously they're in charge <laughs> at that point. <laughs> or and those little blobs may actually be how you know if if this is a part of you that's dancing over here. How old were you when that was? When you had, you know, who, who, what mm -hmm. age are you talking from? You know, yeah. what age yeah. are these little blobs? You know, yeah. and that's another question that I ask too, Diane, is not only who's in charge, but you know, how old are they? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's or a good how one. old are you? Uh, yeah, and that ties it back into um, the acceptance because it is part of us. It is part of us. It's authentically part of us. If we walk around, oh, okay, and how many of us have done this for many years? We walk around pretending we're not angry. <laughs> we walk around pretending we're not scared. So is that authentic? Not necessarily. It's, yeah. and, it's, and what you resist persists. So if we're not accepting um, all that is, all that is, I'll just leave it there, then we're not able to shine the light on it and we're not being ourselves and through and and when we stop that controlling and just do the allowing it all melts together and it balances out to what you truly are and what you what you um, you know the what you give the attention to energy mm -hmm. goes where atten flows where attention goes and so mm -hmm. that just ties it back together with acceptance and when we stop judging oh anger is bad and this it just it just is and yeah. then we choose how, you know, between stimulus and response is choice. We choose how to respond. And by allowing, mm -hmm. you respond more appropriately and more how you choose. And you're so, not fooling I anybody think. when you're ignoring it either. Yeah. Boy, she's <laughs> really, boy, she's really angry. Does she even realize that? Yeah, people <laughs> feel that. I mean, have you ever been in the room with someone who's like really sweet and kind and all these sweet and kind words and uh -huh. uh, lovely things are coming out of their mouths and, and but you can feel? Darts coming in. Yeah, or, yeah. or you know, it might not even have to do with you, but you can feel what they're carrying because they haven't really let it flow through. You can feel that anger mm -hmm. that something's off. So you're not fooling anybody. <laughs> you might as well just come clean, get it out, and move on, and, and 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 get back up to to the highest version of your your authenticity. Hallelujah. Yeah, I'll take and it. It's not preen. <laughs> yes. Yes. Like how much energy, like I think one of us, I can't remember which one, but I think one of us touched on all of the energy that mm. it takes yes. to expend all of this emotion in that a non-constructive way. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and not only that, but, but the whole idea of trying to be somebody who you're not authentically um, you know, and Sandy and I had a really good visual in the intro video that we did um, where we were wearing these different masks and these different hats depending on what stage in life we were and what we were trying to portray to the world. But none of them was our authentic self. Our authentic selves are, you know, the people who are free and fun and creative and not trying to fit inside a box. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. And have bad moods sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, th and that's interesting, um, Ange. You know, we did put on, we'd had a good time with that, putting on the, the masks <laughs> and stuff. And I got some responses from that. Like, people are like, I really want to see. I, 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 in my email that I sent it out in, I, uh -huh. I, I took a. I finally figured out how to do a, you know, a, a screenshot. And I took a screenshot okay. of the the bunny with the, <laughs> the halo. <laughs> and people wanted to see it, and I for, I forgot to put the link to the video. But you know that that was a really interesting response because what it told mm -hmm. me is you know people are can be interested in what you're putting out there in terms mm -hmm. of your mask and whatever, mm -hmm. but they're going to recognize you for something or someone that you really aren't, and then that right. leads 
you down the path of, um, you know, I, I'm not going to go into human design here, but it's going to lead you down to the path, some people down the path of um, invitations or opportunities that just aren't right for them just because yeah. they're wearing a bunny mask and a halo or, <laughs> or a graduate, you know, whatever you were wearing. But yeah. <laughs> a princess tiara. <laughs> yeah. And that leads to the princess. And that, that, um, goes back to the conversation you and I were having on, on the radio show, Angie, and, and that's about, you know, being attached, attachment. Um, so for a job interview, for an interview okay. for an apartment or some, or, you know, I guess even going on a, what do you call it, a speed date. Um, yeah. it, if you, it, how, when you go at it a certain way, that's what you're going to get. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. if you go into a relationship of any kind with authenticity, you're going to have to maintain that. Yeah. If you're attacked, and you, we often do it because of attachment, because we don't want to get the feedback, oh, you're not good enough, or I don't like mm -hmm. you, and, we're, and um, instead it should be, this isn't my right place. But mm -hmm. we perpetuate it, and the ener and we're going back to energy. The energy it takes to hold up that thing, so we don't lose that thing we think will fulfill us. That's what attachment mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. and it's just so much, it's just exhausting. And when I realized, oh my gosh, I can't control anyone, <laughs> and I don't want to. I can only control myself and be myself. It's like I did the dance. Um, so. And when you are authentic and just let go of any attachment to what you are going for, the right thing is what will happen. And besides, they're more likely to like you better. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to a job or anything like that, so it just, it's win, win, win. <laughs> and it saves a lot of disappointment. You yes. know, I think a lot of people get in trouble in relationships because what shows up first is their representative, you know, who mm. they, they want to be or who they think they should be. And then, you know, as time goes on, you can't, you, you run out of energy and um, you become who you really are. And that person that you attracted had bought into your representative. They want to be with that person. Now what do you yeah. do? Yeah. 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 And yeah, and that feels yucky. Yeah, yeah, you get all all wrapped up in it, and then you have to then take the mask off. It's some well, some people never do, but yeah. if you realize what's happening and you want to get out, you got to take the mask off. And that other person was was uh, pulled in, so that's no fun. Yeah, L let's talk for a second about the vulnerability of doing this. Mm. Because as you were talking, Diane, I was remembering. Um, Yesterday, I did up this cover letter, and it was based on that exercise. Remember I sent you guys that email that said two words to describe me? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so this was all kind of an exercise of getting down to my authentic self and how mm -hmm. other people see me and how mm -hmm. that resonates with them and how I want to portray myself to the world. Mm -hmm. And it was all for the purpose of... Um, you know, being able to work that into a, a cover letter, a resume, my business copy, anything like that, so that I was truly reflecting mm -hmm. who I was and what I could bring to the world. Yeah. Now, I was talking to the brilliant coach, and he's going to be on in a couple of weeks. His name is yeah. John Jerkowitz, if you oh, haven't yes. met him. He yeah, with us Chris about was him. great. Oh, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. And so I was talking to him about it, and I said, you know, the funny thing is, because I, I just wrote this, like I have to say, I wrote this brilliant cover letter. <laughs> you go, you go. And, you go. Right? and it was, and it was be, because I used these words that truly described me. It really showed how I could fit in with that mm -hmm. organization in an authentic mm -hmm. way. And then, but I said to him, you know, it's funny because now that I'm not trying to be what I think that they want me to be, right? Mm -hmm. Which is this professional you know, has these skills, has this, has that. Now, if they don't call me for an interview, it's personal. Mm -hmm. Because now it's me, yes. it's authentic me that yeah. I just express to them along with all my skills and experience and talents or whatever. So if they don't call me, 
I said, I think that's going to be the last job that I ever applied for because I'm not going through that again. <laughs> Forget about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it is. It is. You're really putting yourself out there. Mm -hmm. And the way we're used to looking outside ourselves for approval, for need filling, and that sort of thing. And we are kind of taught, not necessarily directly, to be something else. And so that means automatically you're not good enough. Mm -hmm. You're not enough. And so the journey to acceptance and bond acceptance. Oh, embracing who you are as way good enough and way more powerful than you even realize. It has those bumps where we don't know quite yet um, how to say, thank you for not choosing me. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I mean, that's really the end is thank you for not choosing me. I saw some openings. I saw some connection. I'm going to put myself out there. And the answer... It's not their, you know, choice. It could be their not judgment, but we learn to say whatever, whatever. Um, <laughs> but the answer is, thank you. That is not for me. Yeah. And that, but the journey is, oh, I'm gonna get rejected. Oh, I'm not doing it. I'm, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember when I was when I was applying for jobs. Um, I I had this. It was under the service, but it was recruiters. They ruled me, and they were they had the power. Because mm -hmm. they could choose to contact me, to um, give me an interview, and all that sort of thing. And yeah. I, I got an email from one, and then, um, or no, they called me, but I couldn't answer the phone. And then they emailed me right after and called mm -hmm. me again. And I looked at the phone and I said, "You're not the boss. <laughs> it's 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 my world. It's mm -hmm. my world, and yeah. you don't get to decide." And the 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 coming out of that conditioning mm -hmm. of the of out there gets to decide our worth. Yeah. That transition comes with the yeah. you know oh they're not gonna pick me so it's 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 a tough yeah. one but but you can get through it. Yeah. Keep yeah. going. It, ta go it through takes it. a lot of courage. Yes. Yeah. It takes a lot of courage to say, this is who I am, take it or leave it. This is who I am, this is what I have to offer, this is what it's worth, and you can decide whether mm -hmm. or not it, it work. It, you know, it fits in with your organization. But, you know, when you put your, yourself out there, I like that, Diane, about how the answer is thank you if you don't get mm -hmm. hired or you don't get... Um, recognized in some way because when you're that true to you and that true to um, how uh, innately worthy and valuable you mm. are in mm -hmm. in your you know strip down here I am this is it I'm not embellishing <laughs> here in a way presence um, you know you're always going to get back what is exactly right for you yeah. yes yeah, and I think I, I, well, it reminded me of that, and I also think it's important for people to know that these journeys are not all about fuzzy wuzzy. I do this, and everything's perfect, and mm -hmm. you know, <clears throat> excuse me, life is you know a dream. It's it's about you know, and we've all been on the path for years and oh, years, yeah. but. I still had that feeling crop up when mm -hmm. I was talking to John about, well, wait a second, I just realized if they don't call me, then they're not only saying, well, I know I'm overqualified for the job, but but still, they're also saying, I, I'm not, I don't really like the way you presented your authentic self to me. You're not accepted in, the, in mm -hmm. our world, and, and yeah. maybe we interpret it, you're not accepted in the world. Mm -hmm. But but the truth is right, you know, and this is what I said to him, I think I'm going to take it as a sign, you know, because there's 10 positions, there's one me, and there's a perfect, you know, skills and resume, so what else do you want? I'm going to take it as a sign that that's not for me, and it's not so much not applying for other jobs because it's like, oh, they rejected me. It's that I'm going to take that as the final sign that that is not yeah. for me, and I need to spend my time on my business 100% and forget a, forget about it. You know? Yeah. 
Yeah, and yeah. you had to go through that process to get there. Yeah, I, I did exactly. it too, and then I just finally uh, said, you know, that thank you for for those messages. I yeah. finally finally get it after being <laughs> yeah. hit with it uh, so many times. Yeah. yeah, and and this is this is probably for another show, but we can also thank them for bringing up the feeling. Mm -hmm. yeah. yes, because then yes. we can then we can look at the feeling yeah. and let it move motion and mm -hmm. let it go. That's that's yeah. another show, but it's something a little hint there. Yeah, yeah, let it go. But well, it's along the same lines. And and yeah. then ask yourself, okay, you know, what lesson is this trying to teach me? What here? lesson? Thank you. You know, for why have I applied? Me. Yeah, yeah. Why have I applied for you know twenty jobs that I'm highly qualified for? And not gotten called hardly for an interview. Let alone get a the job. questions. Why? The questions, and don't yeah. force the answer. Just to listen and allow. Mm -hmm. And and yeah, um, and letting go of the emotions or the energetic sensations, like I call them. And Sandy uh, refers to it sort of like that. Mm -hmm. um, it makes you more authentic. Ha! Yeah. Uh -huh. and, you know, <laughs> it's not personal. It's not when yeah. you look at it in terms of e letting go of emotion and and putting yourself out there in an authentic way. If you look at it in terms of energy, and it's not personal. You know, they're mm. they're they have their own their the organization or the people that are doing the hiring have their own energy configuration, and maybe right. it's authentic, maybe it's not, whatever. Mm. But it doesn't mesh, you know. But as if when you keep putting yourself out there as your true being, you know, mm. as who you truly are, then um, then you'll find the thing that works for you. But it's just energy. It's just how this one mm -hmm. fits with that one. Right. You know. So. And I, and I turn yeah, it around. But, but for, yeah. I turn it around for people too. If someone you know, gets hurt that I haven't chosen them or whatever, I turn around and I say, well, do you meet nice people that you don't want to work with? Do you meet nice, wonderful, kind, smart people who you just don't want to be friends with? Don't you do that? And yeah. if someone rejects me, I then have to turn it around and say, wait a minute, I don't stop and think about it, but I reject, quote, reject, and we could look at that word and the mm -hmm. connotation that it's just a charge that it has for us. But it gives those blobs something to <laughs> Exactly. Oh, yeah, I heard that word. Let's go party. Uh, but, uh, oh, gosh. What was I saying? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, oh, gosh. Uh, Sorry about that. But you were talking about turning it around. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, so how many times do we, quote, reject things? i got to find a better word. Or not choose. How many times do we not choose things? Emails, products, um, friends, invitations. How many times do we not choose things? And do we think about it? No, it's boom. I don't choose it. Do we sometimes do? Sure, but that's our problem. So if someone else is judging us, that's their problem. It's not personal. And we have to allow them the freedom that we choose mm. to not choose us. <laughs> Ah, yeah. good point. Ooh, that's another. Good let's point. breathe that one in. Yeah. Okay. Point. Yeah. Mm hmm. <sighs> yeah. Because sometimes it can feel sad, but right. Let's go ahead. Mm hmm. Well, it, it just brought to mind the whole idea of, you know, going out there not only authentically, but in line with your values and kind of those universal values of, you know, compassion and truth. And um, you know what's the other ones? But do you know what I mean? Like, so not Integrity. only yeah. So you you need to go out there as your authentic self, but you need to do it in, in a really compassionate and mm -hmm. uh, you know truthful way. And and like you said, allow other people to be like that, and don't put your judgment on them because you know when you look at other people, they say if you see something you don't like. And, you know, uh, Steve Toth has said that, the executive producer for the show, he said, if you see something in somebody else, look at yourself yes. and see if maybe... It's like a mirror. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, that brings up a great question, Ange, and, and I don't want to 
get too deeply into to coaching here, but I have a coaching question for you. <laughs> okay. Uh -oh. okay. Uh -oh. Maybe I want to get deeply into coaching. I don't know. I do want to get deeply into coaching, okay. but maybe we don't have time for all that. I just have that a question because um, because you said that you know this is one of those things where you put yourself out there in a very authentic way, and if this if you don't get hired for this this particular thing, then that's a sign to you that you know. Um, you're just going to focus on your business. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, if is it if, if they if they don't want you as you know to work for them, what does that say about what you want? Um, ooh. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> you know, it's a good question when it strikes you as speechless at first. And, yeah. and uh, so, guys, if you're ever in a coaching session and, and somebody asks you a question, it strikes you speechless. Just like stay with it. it. And, yeah, stay, stay with, with it. it. So, if they rejected me, oh, there's that word again. If they decided not to hire me, it would say about me. That perhaps I didn't, I wasn't as passionate about it as I, I thought I was, and that perhaps it wasn't the thing for me yeah. to do. You know, maybe I didn't, maybe I thought I was expressing myself often authentically, but maybe that position is not for the authentic me. Yeah. Ooh. So again, the thank you. <laughs> And then, yeah. you know, I, I always say, and I, I'm not, anyone asks me to prove it scientifically, I'm not going to. I'm just going to say, <laughs> no, sorry. And that is, the better one is waiting for you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you know, yeah. that's the that's the great thing about um, living in a world where with other people and, and places and things, because you do get feedback from your environment about what's really true for you. Mm -hmm. You know, so so maybe you just don't know certain aspects about yourself. You know, we all have blind spots and mm -hmm. shadow areas and whatever. But uh, if if you need to see it, it's going to show up in front of you. You know, uh -huh. yeah. So yeah. you know, if, if you need to get, if you want clarity, you're going to see it in, in how how another person is dealing with you or how you're interacting with your environment. It's going to show you exactly what's going on inside. Mm -hmm. And you just, you know, brought up the distinction between getting the message and reading it correctly or clearly um, from how people respond to you and reading it uh, as judgment or, oh, you know, looking for things from other people like approval mm -hmm. or things like that. So in how they behave or maybe how they say that's what we want to really look at and say no I'm not going to respond to that or I'm uh, I'm not going to misinterpret but then seeing how pe seeing how people respond that is something that you want to take into account can anyone say it better than I did <laughs> somebody can I know right <laughs> you know what I mean <clears throat> It's like those, those two things are so close. Well, so many things in what we do with personal development are so close. And finding the words to say, do this, but don't, you know, this is problematic, but make this slight adjustment. Yeah. And, and that's right. Yeah. I think it comes back to taking the judgment out of it. it yeah. It's be that comes that yeah comes, you everything know, does <laughs> yeah most that things you can you can see how the person responds to you or the situation responds to you, um, but you don't have to have the little blobs doing their dance yeah. telling you, you can it's, ask the question. it's this way or that way. Yeah. yeah, you can ask the questions. Yeah, what is and listen. For the um, inner voice answer instead of the chatter, um, the chatter fear answer. Aha! Uh -huh, I just yeah. coined a new phrase or something. Great distinction. <laughs> yeah. You coined a lot of phrases, Diane. I know. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this opportunity. It's about halfway through the show, and I just want to remind everyone, if, especially if you're just joining us, that you're watching Path to Joy and Prosperity TV on the Self Evolution <sighs> channel of Conscious mm. Evolution Media, and I have Diane Jones with possibilities uh, empowerment with, coaching empowerment coaching and Sandy Freshy with uh, coaching with Sandy uh, they're both brilliant minds Diane intuitive Sandy 
just um, like really uh, like just brilliant. Well, you saw some of the questions that that came out, and they do make you pause. And uh, <laughs> and uh, so either one of them have uh, great value for anybody as coaches. Yeah. Thanks. Thank I got a I got I got a chill when you when yeah. you are on path to join prosperity and consciousness <laughs> evolution. It's got such a chill. Yeah, uh, I do it all over again. Yeah. Uh, and the path continues. Um, I don't know where you want to go, but I was thinking about um, it. Just everything ties together so amazingly. Mm -hmm. um, what you know we talk about in terms of authenticity and why. Why weren't? Why are we not authentic? And why do we have to go toward uh -huh. it? And and it's almost like I think of it as we're going back to it, mm -hmm. and not as adding some things, but but more letting go of things. Mm -hmm. um, and when you know, I guess you could say when we're born, we're authentic. Mm -hmm. But as as children, and this I don't know. Here we go with tying everything in. It's not personal, etc. With the, the the four agreements, I'll talk about that in a second. But mm -hmm. um, we we're looking from the outside as children. We're sponges. We see how people react to us, mm -hmm. and that's when we don't always get the right signals. We right. we misinterpret the signals because we're mm -hmm. not conscious. When we're conscious, as Sandy was saying, we do we can interpret the signals, mm -hmm. and that's when we start being what our teachers, what our parents. Um, friends, uh, peers, society wants us to be when the news says what the celebrities say <laughs> want mm -hmm. us to be. So, and it's it's it it's not only it not only takes a lot of energy that's wasted, it causes a lot of suffering. Mm -hmm. You know, and as we always say, pa pain is part of life. Suffering is is optional. And I know I can right. have a lot of Buddhist discussions arguing with me about that, but it's um, but there's a lot of unnecessary suffering um, when you're trying to be something you're not. It creates dissonance. Mm -hmm. And so that's why going back to and allowing and looking for that resonance or that mm -hmm. flow, it just, it, and you can say, well, I don't want to be that. I don't want, but guess what? You are that. You are what you are and you can fight if you want to. You mm -hmm. can fight and struggle and suffer if you want to, but if yeah. you want to start by going back and embracing, that's when the fun really begins. Yes, it <laughs> does. And again, it comes back to that choice. Mm -hmm. And I love that saying. It's funny you said that because John just said that yesterday when we were having this conversation. Uh, uh, pain is necessary. Suffering is optional. Well, I got to talk it's, to John. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, we will. But uh, it's it all comes down to the choice. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. When we were right. children, we didn't really have choices. And as survival. We were talking, yeah. Yeah. And and really, as a young child, it is about survival. However, mm -hmm. we filter what you mm -hmm. know the the type of love and guidance that comes into us. It you know we we learn real quickly how to act in certain ways to get our basic needs met. You know, and I think it's a rare parent, and hopefully this is changing as as we're yeah. evolve as humanity is evolving. But you know, it, it was a, a rare parent in yeah. history who could allow their children to be, who could see their children for who they were, and allow them to be Become, those people. Yes, you know, and that comes a great from gift. The whole, the, the whole tribal, you know, we come from tribes, and tribes had to band together and homogenize in order mm -hmm. to, um, and have, you know, have everybody order. had a role in order to have order and survive. Mm -hmm. But we're evolving beyond that, you know, and and um, as coaches and he and you know the healers in the world and and um, and what we're doing in terms of of getting back to our being authentic, our authentic selves, is really setting that tone to allow other people to do the same thing. You know, mm -hmm. to make it okay and make it so that the consciousness has moved from, okay, this is how we do it, this is how we have survived all these centuries and you're going to do it this way too and you're going to be like this, to, <laughs> okay, l let's see what you've got. Let's see who you are, young baby or 20-year-old or whoever, and, you know, and let's bring that out. 
you know. <laughs> Let's see what you got. <laughs> I'm okay with being who I am, and I want you to be fully who you are. And hopefully, yeah. that's where we're, we're. I'm thinking that's where yeah. we're moving as humanity and as parents. And yeah, um, I th I think we are. Yeah. And uh, you know, it brought the vision to mind of you know people thinking that it's kind of hippy dippy trippy. You know, like all of this stuff. But uh, it's it's not. It's it's starting to become mainstream. mainstream. People are. <laughs> you know, being more and more open to it. You see it all over the place. Um, you know, you see it in social media. You see it when you have conversations with people that you don't think are really being authentic. But then when you really get talking to them about this stuff, then it comes out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? and, and they'll see, um, you know, the order versus the let's be who we are, it really, it, it's that we don't trust that it's going to work. We mm -hmm. think we have to, again, with trust and con allowing and control, we have to control it. So, and it's sort of like theory X management in, in a corporation. The more rules you have, the more controlled it will be and, you know, things will work better. But guess what? It's, mm -hmm. it's more things just flow into to where they're supposed to be. So it's yeah. more authentic. Yeah, well, this is what I told my daughter. I told her that um, she said, well, stupid rule. And I said, well, Linz, this is what you need to do. You need to learn what the rules are, and then you know which ones you can you can break, <laughs> and, and it'd be okay, right, you know? Yeah. And, uh, like, so I'm not sure. I mean, I think that definitely we see it, you know, like my 20-year-old daughter and my 23-year-old brother are – way beyond what I would have been at that age yeah. in terms of, you know, thinking consciously and, mm -hmm. and thinking outside oh, the yeah. box and thinking about these laws of attraction. Like, it's amazing. Um, yeah. But at the same time, I'm not sure how totally possible it is, um, you know, given our history, yeah. I think it's going to be a very, very long time before we could ever get to a point where there would be a child that could be brought up fully, you know, keeping that innocence and that authenticity and that um, awe of the world and and not having to, you know, backtrack a little bit as an adult to try and get over some of those hurdles. What do you think about that? Well, I see I see the same thing and um, with my 17-year-old stepson, you know, mm -hmm. he really questions a lot about, mm -hmm. well, why do we have these rules? And and a lot of what he says makes a lot of sense, you know. <laughs> yes. But but at the same time, you know, I think I think the key in in uh, Having another, having the next generation come up and just fully get it right away with having to go back and relearn is, is, be first of all being as as an older generation as the leadership or whatever you call it the wise ones I don't know what we are you know to, to really be able to to have We're done both. that for ourselves <laughs> I don't know if the wise is the right word in my case but have done having having done that for ourselves and being able to be that be be me be you be be mm -hmm. real um, and hold that space. You know, and then in 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 holding that space, um, allowing them the opportunity and the, and giving them the guidance in learning how to man, and then learning how to manage their own energy, mm -hmm. because a lot of them have the, the everybody has that innate wisdom. They're just a little bit more in touch with it, and it's creating a lot of dissonance with what's mm -hmm. traditional out there that says you can't be like who you are. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's up to yeah. us to hold that mm -hmm. place of authenticity inside ourselves and to be wise about how to manage energy so that when they get to the point where they realize they can't they can't be them and, and be what other people want them to be at the same time. <laughs> yeah. That they that they have that we we're ready with, with tools to help them to learn how to manage and get mm -hmm. and trust themselves. Yeah. yeah, I picture us uh, standing on the other side of a bridge and holding our hands out and mm -hmm. uh, welcoming them over because we have all, the three of us at least, we have been in that place where mm -hmm. we're resisting breaking out of that shell yet we're forced to break. I'm sure there are all sorts of beautiful yeah. things. Anais Nin said something, you know, when, you know, you almost can't help but bust out of that shell. I'm sure she didn't put it that way. But, um, <laughs> It, it, we've all been in that place and it can be very confusing and tough so you know what as Ange said sometimes you just 
you got to backtrack. You mm -hmm. or maybe all the time you got to mm -hmm. backtrack and yeah, have some rules to follow until you get to that self knowledge place. Yeah. And you get to that self trust. Uh, this is I call it the mm -hmm. selves. That self trust place, that self acceptance place where you can then know uh, which rules to chuck and mm -hmm. and which rules just to help you as you're transitioning because yeah. you have to have that as we say in coaching scaffolding um, yeah to bring yeah. him along so. well you know with my stepson um, he, he upped his game this year because he decided he wanted to go to a tougher school and he has had um, He's had some challenges, you know, and with with uh, with him, we've been really working with him on developing his system, kind of like what you're saying, uh, Diane, with the scaffolding. Mm -hmm. You know, what's your what do you say? What do you want? What do you value? What do you really um, want in your life? What's most important? Set your priorities. And now here, how are you going to manage yourself so that you can have all of these things that you want? And yeah. that's your system. You know, mm -hmm. and and that that takes out a lot of the okay. Well, my peers say I have to do this, and um, you know, uh, my school says I have to do that, and you know, and I'm I'm trying to make everybody happy. What's your system for getting the most that you want? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That you say you want it out makes, of your life. It, once you have that, and that ties again back into the broad theme. If you know what mm -hmm. your broad theme is, your life, your peers can say anything they want, and you, mm -hmm. and everything becomes easy. It's no, I got to keep my, you know, as they say, eyes on the prize, and mm -hmm. uh, keep focusing in that, and and keep listening. So. Yeah. Yeah, actually, Diane, I have a good visual for what you were mm. talking about, and um, it was something I think I saw it on Facebook recently and it and it said that in the the caterpillar has to live in darkness before it can become a butterfly mm. Mm. so you know for some of us for a lot of us we mm. need to go through that pain and suffering and mm -hmm. you know in order to you know kind of break out of that cocoon and become the beautiful, unique people that we are. Um, but I guess we'd like to help our children or you know the next generation not have to live so much in the dark. Mm -hmm. So you know what could be an analogy for that? You know something. You know just give them a little bit better start in life so that they travel. Um, you know, a less rocky path, so to yeah. speak. Well, one thing is to not throw the throw the basket over them <laughs> and try to squelch them. You know, mm -hmm. and I think that's what happened. You know, has happened a lot through the generations is because a lot of uh, you know children know who they are a lot of times until um, they're. The, the significant others in their environment start to say, okay, you have to put a blanket over that, you can't express this, that's not mm -hmm. nice, this is not you, or this is not how we do it. It may yeah. be them, <laughs> it's not how we do it, you know, so the first thing is just don't throw the basket or the blanket over them. That's and so then, funny. Yeah. <laughs> the, the visual that I had was the complement to that. I was imagining the children being handed a light. Ah. And and then I imagine the that stoking the energy of their fire or light inside of them, and mm. that that totally complements. Don't put the bla blanket or basket <laughs> on. So you know, <laughs> shining the light, the guidance, and that um, I think it, you know, it, and it's it it's it's a, goes back to habits too because we practice the inauthenticity we practice mm -hmm. it we're used oh, to it yeah. that's why it's pain that's why we go you know break out of the cocoon that's why it's the dark night of the soul we've we've practiced it it's habits um and you know it's it's really simpler than we think sometimes i say to clients i and i say repeat after me and and do the whole hand gesture i go oh it's just a habit. <laughs> Even if it's the most painful, deep, t t terrible, oh my gosh, it's ruling me. It's just a habit. <laughs> and if we take away its power, and again, back to who's who's in charge here, mm -hmm. um, then, then 
the the path to allowing and becoming um, be just becomes much more of a flow. And every time we talk about this, we're all like, oh, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it just flows. It does, yeah. And, and uh, I, I I keep thinking about those blobs in the brain now. <laughs> they, oh, great! They're thanks. Like, they're like the keepers of the habits, the habits of thought. You know, mm -hmm. they, because you know they get triggered and they have their own dance pattern about the thoughts, and and that's how um that's what I I uh, guide my clients toward. You know, is to be aware of when that ha those habits they get triggered into those habits of thought that disempower mm -hmm. them, that mm -hmm. that make them want to pull that blanket back over them or turn their light mm -hmm. out. You know, that yeah. that they're just like you said, they're just habits. And if you pay attention to what the blobs are doing in your brain, if you pay attention to what you're thinking, um, you know, and you, you catch yourself yeah. Yeah, thinking something over and over in, in similar ways, then you know you've hit upon one of those habits. Yes. Mm -hmm. Self-awareness without judgment is your, is your best friend, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Yeah, so you got me thinking. You got me thinking. Yeah, me too. You gotta breathe it in. I, I do want to just quickly tie something. It's a couple of things, and I'm just the big tire inner. Um, <laughs> and, and when we're talking about uh, control versus flow, um, there was an exercise. Um, you know what? I might have mentioned this on the radio show in a, in a, a book called "You Already Know What to Do." And even if you don't read the book, just remember the title because it's about intuition because we already yeah. do know what to do. And the mm -hmm. exercise was to just draw a picture, no other explanation than that, of what your life is like now and what you want it to be. And when I drew mm -hmm. the picture at the time, it was like these kinds of lines, jagged, sharp, just like it just felt like mm. you were tight and controlled. And and what I wanted it to be was just this flowing river, easy, just like, ah. And and that's how I do feel now. So mm -hmm. um, just uh, back to the flow. And just to, to tie into what you were talking about, compassion for others, the four agreements, that book by Don Miguel Ruiz, who I recommend mm -hmm. to everybody. Yes, yes, um, yes. And, and about don't take anything personally from a, mm -hmm. you know when we're being authentic and other people you know we're looking for signals or get signals from other people the other side of that is one of the other agreements and that's be impeccable with your word mm -hmm. so we then are not um, stopping other people from their authenticity yes. and of course those feed back and forth the less we judge ourselves the less we ju judge others and vice versa mm -hmm. so thank you mm -hmm. for letting me do those tie-ins I love tie-ins <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. And yeah, and that was kind of what I was trying to get to when I yeah. was also when I was mentioning the whole thing about compassion and and truth. Because if we're talking about us being born authentic, I think that we're also born with those virtues of you know innocence and truth yeah, and awe. I think, that, I think and, they're all and there compassion already. Compassion for other people. You know, children are so compassionate. You know, mm -hmm. like. Jenna, my three-year-old uh, granddaughter, will just come up to, or we were in the movie, watching the movie last night, and and she just looked over at me and she went like this Aww. when we were watching the movie, and that, you know, and like there's something so pure and genuine about yeah, that, yeah, authentic, and, yeah, and it's not uh, you know in our nature to judge other people and treat them them badly, and and. Uh, you know, to not do things with integrity. Like, it's not natural for us to lie or, you know, anything else. Yeah, right? yeah it, it's what you bring forward. You you can bring it forward. I, I heard someone um, in this, this thing called access, access Consciousness, and she put it so well. We already are everything. You don't have to go out and get compassion. You don't have to go out and get this. You have it inside of me. You just cultivate it, just like that... Um, I don't know if it's a koan or, or a story where the grandmother is talking to the granddaughter. I, I changed the gender. And, um, and she says, oh, there are two wolves that live inside of you. Yeah. And they're in conflict all the time. And they're at war with each other. One is in what I call the love column, loving, generous, compassionate, etc., and mm -hmm. courageous, and the other is in the fear column that I call it, 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 you know, hatred, anger, jealousy, that sort of thing. And the granddaughter looks up and says, which one wins? And the grandmother answers, 
the one you feed. Mm -hmm. And so that ties right into authenticity is allowing for things to come up. And if you want to cultivate other um, attributes, that's absolutely authentic and it comes out more. And yeah. it's still Dan, authentic. Can I, uh, yeah. Sorry, can I just stop you for a second? Because yeah. I just saw that we have a comment, somebody watching the live stream. Oh, great. Um, his name is Paul and he said, I feel trapped in my life and I can't find joy. Hmm. Um, so what can we all say to, to Paul to help him with that? And I'm going to do the same thing Diane is doing and yeah. just connect with Paul right mm, now. Yeah. It's too bad we weren't in a live conversation. Yeah, to him. ask him questions. I'll just um, say what's coming to me okay. and, it's, and it just ties in. It's too... It's not about struggle. It's not about perpetuating the trapped. It's about just being, being with the feeling of being trapped. And notice that your mind is connecting a story to that feeling of being trapped that is not true. The story yeah. is not true. Mm -hmm. Just take care of yourself. And I know that sounds simple. It's one of the most powerful things you can do is just be with it. Cultivate a feeling of love, even if you don't ha know how. Just feel energy in your body, um, and just and allow and and don't fight. Just allow it to come, and the clarity will come to you much more easily. Yeah, yeah. You know, <clears throat> feeling. Tra I've been. I felt trapped before. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. You know. Before before breaking out of the cocoon, and uh, tr that that feeling of being trapped, um, let, Paul, what can I offer you? Um, it, it's a a part of that process of getting back to you, and it, who you are is where your joy is, and it is it, it's a self discovery process. It's something that isn't um, necessarily. Uh, pleasant all the time, but the gift that you get at the end when you, uh, as Diane said, take get back to you and, and take care of yourself and, and do it moment to moment is that you do get your authenticity and, and your joy. Um, and, uh, and, and just keep going with it. You know, don't let that feeling paralyze you. But do let it stop you so that you can go inside and find mm -hmm. what's in there for you. You know, mm -hmm. who, who you are in there and bring it out. Yeah, the beauty. Yeah. And are we able to, to comment? We can always add comments yeah, later. Yeah, we can yeah. add comments again after the show, Paul, because uh, yeah, Sandy's you, Paul. reminding me of actually a, uh exercise that actually somebody was a did as a guest post on my site and it was a way of challenging you know some of these stories that Diane was mentioning that we tell ourselves when we're in those tough places um, which we all are you're not alone there um, uh, we all are at times and oh, yeah. and if you really look at those and question them you know is this just the story I'm telling myself or is this actually the truth like what evidence do I have mm -hmm. for that mm -hmm. um, and and then what evidence do I have that it's not true and mm -hmm. you know write those down and then the other thing is is you know think about back to times where you did experience joy and love in yeah. your life um, you know even just moments of, of that um, you know, for me, it's walking down by the water. When I lost my job two years ago and I was devastated, I went through this, you know, kind of feeling like that, you know, like, where do I go now, you know, because, and so I started doing things like, um, you know, I always wanted to ride horses. I always wanted to, mm -hmm. you know, play a musical instrument. So I started drum lessons and, you know, I started, you know, getting in touch with people that made me uh, feel inspired. And these mm -hmm. ladies, you know, lifesavers. Um, so, Paul, contact any one of us individually. We're going to respond to you personally on the comments on YouTube, and we'll give you some uh, pers personal contact information where you can contact us and mm -hmm. some resources for you to look at. Uh, thank you so much, Sandy, Freshy, and Diane Jones for being here with me. This was just an amazing 
hour, as always, it is with you two. And Sandy, you are wise. And uh, yes, you are. So are you, Diane. We're we all have... enlightened in our in our own way, and and we're still continuing the journey. And uh, uh, you know, you heard Diane and Sandy mention the radio show a couple of times. Uh, Sandy was on the tape show this week. Diane's on next week. That's with uh, PLV radio.com and it, the show's called Dear Angela on Happiness and Success, Success. You're listening to Path to Joy and Prosperity. Visit ConsulateEvolutionMedia.com for uh, lots of other great shows and information about all of us. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Oh, okay. And Steve's just saying that we can continue uh, the comment in the show's video recording after. So, yes, we're going to do that. Um, he's the executive producer here. So, thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Let's just close it out, ladies. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Bye.